From a landfalling tropical storm to a major cool down this week to a severe weather outbreak, we've got a lot to cover in today's weather report. Thank you guys for tuning in. And as always, uh, if you don't already, please subscribe to this channel. Early warnings of severe weather, a reliable forecast, and a direct approach you won't find anywhere else. If you can, please let me know in the comment section where you're watching from right now. That helps me out tremendously to be able to forecast direct to you. Yeah, we had a landfalling tropical storm this morning. It's been a rough day across the North Carolina coast as we've had a lot of wind and a lot of rain as this system cranked up in about 24, 36 hours and made landfall. And now it's playing weak weekend spoiler to many across the East Coast as it continues to move up through Raleigh, Durham, into Virginia, and just providing for a wet, cool, breezy weekend here up toward the Northeast, even into New England at times. If you're on the western side of this, the Western Carolina is just smooth sailing all the way down to Florida. You got this big fetch of north-northeast wind wrapping into this, making for a very pleasant day for you friends in Florida. And again, let me know where you're watching from in the comments section. Give this video a like and uh, we'll keep this conversation going because big changes are moving our way this week. This system is going to continue to chug up to the north. There's current radar. Let's look at the severe risk today because any landfalling tropical system has that rotation, that twisting and turning in the atmosphere. It can give you uh, severe concerns, including uh, tornadoes. In fact, there is a small chance for tornadoes here across the north. Norfolk, Virginia area going up to uh, the northeast here. We'll have to watch that area closely, but a more pronounced area here toward the nation's midsection. I mean, we're talking about some tornado risks, 5%. We haven't had that in a while here for eastern parts of Oklahoma, uh, up toward the northeast into Iowa and, and Minnesota seeing a severe thunderstorm and tornado risk today. Let's see what that looks like. I'm looking specifically at the tornado parameters here. We've got that setting up strong today. Anytime I see twos and threes, Threes, you can count on a couple of tornado warnings in those areas. Same story for Oklahoma. That goes through tonight and into tomorrow where it shifts out of the north more to the south here for Texas into Oklahoma for our Sunday. So if you have any family or friends that way or you're watching right now in Texas or Oklahoma, uh, be on guard for severe weather as we'll have that potential there. For us on the East Coast, uh, watching a Dahlia move up, can't rule out some isolated spin-up tornadoes in Norfolk going up toward parts of D.C. Uh, even into Maryland could have a severe risk going into tomorrow. It's just going to be wet in many areas here as this system continues to trek northeast bound. As for wind speeds, it's going to be really quite gusty as we move throughout the day. Those gusts today and tomorrow get up to around 40 to 50 miles per hour with this, even though it's well inland, still packing a bit of a punch as far as wind is concerned. And rainfall totals are sitting here between two to three, even four inches of rain as you stretch up to New England. I mean, this is going to impact millions here, and it's a tropical storm that made landfall in North Carolina. So, of course, that gets the headlines, but for my friends up here in New York, Pennsylvania, uh, into New Jersey, uh, you're going to see some impacts from this with quite a bit of rainfall. Florida, yeah, we could see additional rain start to take shape as we go into tonight, as we just can't catch a break, right? Ah, uh, but changes are moving in for many. In fact, an early taste of November type weather heading to the Carolinas and Georgia as we go into Tuesday, Wednesday's time frame. Reason being, you see this kink in my isobars right here? That down the spine of the Appalachian Mountains is a telltale sign of wedging. It's called the Carolina Wedge. You get that northeast breeze to set up and bank against the Appalachian Mountains. You will oftentimes get cool weather, drizzle, clouds, and some light rain. And that's what I see in the forecast for Tuesday and Wednesday and in into Thursday as well. It looks like it is luck would have it going into Friday. We'll clear things back out for a beauty of a Friday night football weekend. And next Saturday, yeah, week from today, looks to be pretty nice across many for football games and any kind of outdoor plans you would have. As for temperatures, check it out. Going to be quite toasty on Sunday. We're talking near 90 in Florida, near 90 in southern Georgia and Alabama, low to mid 80s in the western Carolinas. But look what happens Monday. Quite toasty again, mid to even upper 80s showing up. But by Tuesday and beyond, We've got 70s showing up here as far as highs. Look at Wednesday's highs. 
upper 60s to around 70. That's over 10 degrees below where we should be this time of the year. Going to be very, very nice as we go through Thursday as well. Low 70s, a nice cool breeze. Going into Friday, a chilly morning in the low 50s and topping out in the upper 70s. And then next weekend, early shot at that, looks like we warm things back up to near 80 degrees again. So it's a short-lived cool down, but we will see that. As for those of you asking, what about the leaves? What about fall colors? What about just it feeling cool finally? Start to be in that time where we will start to think about our first frost, our first freeze across western North Carolina, stretching up the Appalachian Mountains into Pennsylvania and New York. Uh, well, the latest model here, you see that line graph just bottom out. This is the Arctic Oscillation and the North Atlantic Oscillation looks the same. These are teleconnections. Basically, it gives me an idea of the way the jet stream may behave. And anytime you see big dips in that can usually mean an active pattern and, and, and a more progressive jet stream and that usually can indicate cooler air trying to come in and it looks like as we go through the first week of October we're transitioning so it when we're transitioning you don't immediately get that cool down it's right after it so I would expect us to be rather warm that first week of October across many in the east coast Yes, we'll get a cool day here or there, but a pronounced cool down looks to be on the way, possibly that second week of October, and I think that'll be the one that gives us our first frost freeze threat across the East Coast pretty much on schedule with what you would expect normally. We also are now dealing with Felipe, developing later today. Well, models in the track here for the National Hurricane Center show, it will be a tropical storm later today and continue toward the north and west where it will likely become a hurricane. Good news for you friends in the Caribbean islands, the windward and leeward islands, St. Martin North. It looked a lot more dire just a couple of days ago. Our models are in great agreement here. Check this out. This is an average of all of the computer model runs, not just the Euro or the GFS, but all of them. Look how it takes a hard right once it gets to the islands and moves away. So there's a fair amount of spread in the models once you get here. Some of them want to take it a little closer to Bermuda, others not. But either way, it looks like it moves well east and north of the islands and well away from the United States. So that is certainly great news there is just a couple of days ago, our models were showing a different story. The steering currents, all the difference in the world, had an opening in the high pressure, which allowed that thing to sneak on up. As always, folks, we are peeled toward the tropics. This time of the year, you start to get those progressive cold fronts that try to block them from the United States. But hurricane season very much still in its prime, uh, at least through the next two weeks. I do see things calming down after Felipe. So during that active time frame that's normally quite active, we may sneak out about seven days worth of relatively calm weather and threats. So if we can get through about another week after that, we would be looking much better. So hey, as always, I really appreciate you being here. Honestly, I love what I do. I'm a chief meteorologist at WYFF News 4 in Greenville, South Carolina. Uh, just doing my job every day is a blessing and being able to do it with you here on YouTube is also a blessing. It's a platform that I feel like God has given me to be able to reach many more and to be able to forecast for you wherever you're at. And my specialties are severe weather, uh, whether it be snowstorms, uh, tropical systems, or tornadoes. I provide you with that early warning. I'm, I'm not like a lot of folks. If I see something, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to do it responsibly. I won't cry wolf. I won't hype anything. So you get a reliable forecast that you can count on for your family, and you get that direct approach. I'm going to tell you right there when it's time to worry and when it's not time to worry. Uh, so that you can kind of have a, a really good idea, a clear picture of what to do. So folks, hope you have a great rest of your weekend. Uh, so far, so good here at the Justice Home. We've got two soccer games today and then church tomorrow. And uh, it's my nephew's birthday tomorrow. So we're heading up to the mountains to treat him to a fun day. So a lot going on here at our house, but it's a great weekend. Hope you're having a good one too. And we'll talk soon, okay?